Hi, my name is Consada, and today we are going to be talking about a holiday. I'm not really sure to call it a holiday, but it is a, a day that people celebrate. And I just want to put out some scriptures that will maybe if you're not sure whether to or not to at this time this month um, hopefully these scriptures will help you to know what I believe God is saying to us to the church to born-again Christians so I'm gonna start there okay and I will say this when I was young I celebrated it. Now I just want you to know though though I had the best parents in the world we just didn't know. You know sometimes you do things and you could just be the best but are just um, not knowledgeable in that area. You know it wasn't till I was older and had children myself that I did some research and it wasn't hard, it wasn't long, it's very simple. And especially today, it's very simple to find out um, on your phone or computer about certain holidays and what is their origin and what do they really mean? What do they stand for? And you're gonna find that you're gonna see lots of different opinions, some people see the good in it, some see the bad in it, and I will say this, because again, my parents were good. I did not allow my children to do it because, um, and you're gonna also see where I was also naive too, but I didn't allow them to um, just because of what I had researched and it didn't look good to me. But, oh boy, here we go. Uh, but we ended up doing it in the church. I know, crazy. Uh, you know, we, we try to substitute and I would have to say my views, if anybody cares what my views or opinions are, you know, um, are, have changed. I happen to not agree with this holiday at all because I've learned more. And I think that, you know, you're accountable for what you know. Let me just say that. And people could say, take the easy way out and say, well, I don't know anything about it. And I don't want to know anything about it. So I'm not going to research. Well, the problem with that, and here is my question, I'll be honest with you, just because you don't know something, does that mean it doesn't affect you? I am finding out that as I look back, and I'm not saying everything in my life, but in a lot of things in my life, when I look back, that I took part in and that I did and I didn't um, realize, you know, how bad they were. And many, maybe even all, did affect my life. They did. So just because you don't know something doesn't mean it's not going to affect you. Let's say you were, and I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm not trying to condemn anybody let's say you were um, smoking cigarettes but you never read the package nobody ever told you the dangers of it you so you literally didn't know you know could it still affect your health I think this would be your health right could it but you don't know anything bad you never read anything you didn't read the package you didn't read the warnings does that mean it doesn't affect your life or your body whichever right i mean i think 
in life, there's a lot of things like that. So what I would say, and I've always been a researcher, I love to read, did a lot more reading. Now, today it's on your phone, you know, but um, back then it was mostly books, you know. Um, you can research, you know, we all have time in our life. We do. We have, well, we, we think we don't. We say, I don't have any time. I've got too many things to do. True, true. But we can prioritize some time um, for things. If you're going to prioritize time to just watch, say, a weekly TV show that, you know, it's not about health, it's not about how to help people, it's not about yeah, really anything specific that could help you or somebody else, but how much time do we spend doing things like this? And again, I'm not cutting people down. I'm not. It's just, you can't say, I don't have time, but you have time for other things. Yikes, because you know, really in all reality, we'll make time for the things that are important to us. We all know that. And um, I think it's good to research things, to find out. Don't always take somebody else's word for everything. And then I listened to somebody the other day that was telling me about a subject. And I was like, they said, well, but I've researched. I, I, I went back to the beginning. I found out. And, and me, you know, we all want to think that we're right. But my opinion was completely opposite of this person's. And they said they had researched and they found the answer. And again, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody because I'm not. But let's just say this. I researched the subject much more. You know, listen to 5, 10, 15, 20 people. And, and then also, even with all of that, you want to discern things by the Holy Spirit. Lord, who's telling? And I'm not saying I would listen to every different religion and study all that. No, no, no. I stay on the subject. You know what I mean? If I want to know about natural remedies or home remedies, I'm going to go to the people that do that and study that. You see what I'm saying? The people that actually know about that stuff, okay? Because you're going to find both sides on just about everything. You know, it's like if you want to listen to a Republican view, do you go listen to a Democrat or vice versa? No, you're going to go to the people that are going to help you to become more knowledgeable in whatever it is you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? So... If you want to learn how to make cheese, you're going to go to people that make cheese <laughs> the natural way, let's say, you know, uh, you're not going to go to the person that's making um, um, meat or well, you can't make meat. It comes from an animal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you're going to watch the person that's making cheese and not the person that's making butter, you know? Do you see what I'm saying? You're gonna go after the people that are doing it the way you want, okay? Do you want the natural way of making cheese or do you want the processed way of making cheese? If you wanna make it yourself, you're gonna go with the natural way. I'm not trying to get off the subject, but if you want to research about your holidays, and obviously it's October, I don't need to say which one it is. But, you know, um, yeah, so it doesn't take a whole lot to find out, you know, and, and, and sometimes, and I'm not trying to be hard, but I think sometimes people don't want to do the research because they really don't want to know because they do want to celebrate it. They do want to dress up. And, um, again, the choice is yours. You know, my, my big question is, Lord, you know, just because I don't know, you know, am I accountable for it? Because I believe in life, you know, if you know about it and you choose to do it, then I know that that's sin to you if you know that it's wrong. But if somebody 
doesn't know and does it, you know, is that still sin? I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't have a hundred percent answer on that one. I really don't. I think God knows the heart of every person, but I will say this, not to, for us to just get off and say, well, then I don't want to know nothing because I don't want to be accountable for nothing. I want to do whatever I want, you know, and heck man, <laughs> you know, like the church of Satan, do what thou wilt, you know, there's no consequences. There's no whatever makes you feel good. I don't believe that's what God wants. I, I believe God wants us to, he says, desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that you may grow. And after milk comes meat. We're supposed to be reading our Bible every day. We're supposed to be spending time with the Lord. Not to be like legalistic or anything, but we do it because we want to learn. I mean, in any subject, you go to to you say you read a book back then like i said read a book today you know it'll be on your phone or computer but how do you learn you have to read whether it's your a book or your phone you got to read that's how you learn you know what i'm saying so educate yourself in this area and i would say not just listen to one person cuz sometimes we tend to listen to the people that we may they they may not know there's a lot of people out there saying a lot of stuff about a lot of things but it doesn't mean they're right obviously even now in uh, everything that's going on in the world i mean you can't believe what everybody's saying you know what i'm saying because you know my famous saying not everybody has your best interest at heart you know, and so it's very important to get on to what I always end up getting on to is reading your Bible so that by reading the word of God, you become more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, I believe it's John 16, 13. I had it up here. I took it down and not sure where I put it now. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you into all truth. When you got two people in front of you and they're both saying opposite things, how are you going to know? right? You've got to have that discernment and that comes from knowing the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So read your Bible every day. If you haven't got that, <laughs> so let's go back to um, this. I don't even want to call it a holiday. I, I, I don't know what you call it. I was going to say celebration and I'm like, no, that's, that's a bad choice because who are they celebrating? You know what I'm saying? Um, some people say that they're celebrating, like on November 1st, they call it All Saints Day. But I think that came after, and some people think it came first, where you're supposed to be celebrating the, the dead saints. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think we're supposed to be celebrating anybody that's dead. I'm Honestly, I mean, I know that... But I don't think we're supposed to. You know, there's life and there's death. And if those people have gone on to be with the Lord, they're celebrating. We don't need to celebrate anybody. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so I think Halloween was Christianized. Like a lot of, you know, they're trying to do trunk and treats and hallelujah night and harvest parties and all this kind of stuff and i just listened to somebody this morning there was two christians kind of debating about one was definitely against it the other one was like well i don't see anything bad you know in it and uh they think it's a way to have fun and uh but you know i look at it this way I think people's hearts, they have, probably have really good hearts, these churches that do that, because I did that with my kids. Now, of course, I've repented since then, you know. I, I, I don't think you should Christianize a, holiday, um, a day like that um, in any way. And I know what people are thinking. They're thinking, well, it's a way to um, reach out to the community and it's a way to uh, evangelize them get them to come into the church but you know as I was thinking about it I thought you know most people you know parents most parents are 
good. You know, they, they don't, they know in the day and age we're living in now. I can't even believe back then we did it, but in the day and day, day and age we live in now, um, where all this kind of witchcraft and sorcery and things like that has become so commonplace that, you know, people think, oh no, that doesn't happen. Oh yes, it does. <laughs> I've watched enough people that were ex witches, ex warlocks, you know, and they said, this is what we do on that night. This is actually what happens. And it is more horrific than anything you could ever imagine what they do. This is big time. This is a high holy day for them. I don't even want to call it holy, but it is to them. And it's not to God. It is to Satan. And uh, for us to have any part in it is not good. But I think those that do, that are Christians, don't realize what's going on. As I didn't. I did a little bit, so we didn't do it. And then I did a couple times, and I regret it. I felt pressure against other Christian parents. Oh, my kids are going, and you know, there's, and they were good Christians too. And I thought, well, you know, I guess it wouldn't hurt, you know, once or twice or whatever. And you know, I always regretted it. Always did. Never go against your heart. You know, if someone's not convicted in an area, and you are, you better go with the way you feel, whether your kids like it or not. You know, because we, even as adults, we feel pressure from our friends. You know, oh, I don't want to say anything because if I say anything, they're going to think I'm coming against them. Oh, you're not a good parent for letting your kids go trick or treat. You know what I mean? We, we actually have peer pressure as well. And we have to not succumb to it even as adults, you know, because we don't want to lose a friend or make a friend feel bad if we say anything, you know, not even saying anything to them about it, but just the fact that you're backing off, they're going to be like, huh, you know, uh, yeah, you don't want to, yeah, so, but you know what, you bet, got to stand your ground, do not compromise, not for your children, not for your friends, remember, uh, we fear God and only him. You know, the Lord said to me the other day, he wanted me to say something and he said, you know, you do not fear people. Or, <clears throat> excuse me, usually like the word of God will say, you know, do not fear man. That could be man or woman, you know that. And he said, you fear only me. And we know that doesn't mean be afraid, but we means that that awe, that reverence is only for him. You know, we answer only to him. We are accountable only to him. To not to succumb to peer pressure. I don't care what age you are. You know? So, um, so I repented for that. And then I went back to where I was like, no, I just can't do this. I don't agree with it. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to tell you something I didn't do that I wish I would have. Um... I think this is what I personally think now, you know, instead of celebrating whatever it is you do, um, harvest parties, whatever it is that they want to call it. They're trying to Christianize a, a, a holiday that doesn't belong to us. Um, it's only one day. It's only one day. If you think you're going to evangelize to people, or you want to, because that's the heart of Christian churches. These churches, they they love people. They want to get people saved. But on that night, most parents, a lot of times they'll come to your church uh, because they want their kids to have the candy or whatever, not miss out. Can you believe we would even think that way? We don't want our kids to miss out. It's one day. It's a bag of candy in all reality when you put it all together. You could go buy them a bag or two of candy and have... Um, another day on another day, just not that day because uh, I won't even mention his name, but there's a man who started the church of Satan and he said that the devil said, you know, they, they talked to the devil. Yeah. Believe it or not. Um, cause he's happy. 
that he could get Christians to worship him on at least one day. Can you believe that? <laughs> wow, we should all just be like, that's pretty bad. It's God's enemy. You know, why would we want anything to do with anything that has to do with him, right? We want to snatch those people out of the kingdom of darkness, not hang out there with them. And I think that our heart, again, is good. You know, um, or, I mean, I don't do it now. Definitely don't approve of it now. But I'm thinking I can see where the churches, you know, they think if they cater to the world that they're going to be able to bring the world. But I, I don't agree with that because we have the word of God and we've got other scriptures that tell us different. You know, for instance, um, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, right there telling us, too, that the Word of God is the will of God. We know that. If you ever want to know what the will of God is, read your Bible. You'll find out. And if it doesn't literally tell you in there like don't do this or do this and you have other kind of questions that aren't literally in there like you know should i take this job or that job then that's when by reading the bible don't ask me how it happens but it does god will give you discernment to where you'll you'll know he'll speak to your heart and he'll let you know the answer so um here's another one i want to read Oh, this is good too. Third John chapter one, verse four. For I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. Now, when I say truth, the Bible is the truth. Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one cometh unto the Father but through him. So this always kind of goes back to the word. Um, so listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse 17 and 18. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I shall receive you. Isn't that good? And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty. So um, we don't have to mix in with them. We're supposed to be a light, and there's nothing about that holiday that is light. It's darkness all the way. Um, I know you want to minister to people and get them into the church, but how about having a party um, on October 20th, on October, you know, 10th, on October something, some other time that month, not to celebrate, have anything to do with Halloween, but just say, you know what, this is for you because we love you. We want to invite you to our church. We're going to feed you. There's going to be tons of games and candy. But have, but not let it have any kind of reference to substituting that holiday, because we, you can bring them in 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 August, and July. Um, why does it have to be on that day? Do you know what I'm saying? We don't need to substitute that holiday at all. If you want to get people saved, then then then. Um, do it in the middle of summer, you know, and have a great big uh, party outside with swim things and picnic and free food and games for the kids. I mean, you can do all kinds of wonderful things and have obviously be promoting the gospel, talking to the people about Jesus, have a sermon, you know, tell them about the love of God and how he just wants to bless you today and he loves you. You know, that, it doesn't have to substitute that day. Have a party every month for the lost. There you go. How about that? Oh, I like that. That's kind of cool. No, I'm serious. You want to bring them into your church? There's so many things you could do. You don't have to have anything to do with that day. Only because no one can tell me 
that that's not a dark day. And if you don't think it is, here it is. I'm not saying you don't love the Lord because you probably do. All I'm saying is you're not knowledgeable about what happens that night. I want to read um, something to you. There was a reason why God said to get rid of the sorcerers and the witches and there's a reason why because it's real that that part is actually real people that think that they're going to these people and um getting blessed or getting their answers or you know talking to their dead relatives or you know that god the devil's going to help them yeah the devil i did hear this one preacher say yeah the devil can bless you too but there will be a price he always wants paid back and it, I won't tell you what he wants. But it's, trust me, it's not good. Okay? Where God wants to bless you and he requires nothing. It's free. Everything about God is free. His love is free. And everything you need, he wants to meet your needs. You know? He wants to answer you. And I mean, I have scriptures that I wrote down about that. Um... You know, but I, I think what happens is the reason people go consult uh, fortune tellers and mediums and horoscopes and all these kind of things um, because they want answers. And the thing about God is that I have found out is that with God, we sometimes we have to wait. He talks about patience and having to wait and the patience and the endurance and the character that it builds in us God's not a microwave God but the one thing I think people one of the reasons they go to the occult and they get caught up in uh, witchcraft and different things like that is because they can call somebody and get a reading right now they can go to a fortune teller and get a reading right now but you have to understand those people are not talking to your dead relatives uh, whoever they're consulting is of the demonic realm. And they're, and you'll say, well, but what they told me happened. What they told me was true. Because the demons they're talking to are called familiar spirits that have been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of years. So they know what has happened. They've seen your relatives. They probably, they're walking around. They were very, that's why they call them familiar. They know what went on in your life they know what went on in the lives of your uh, parents or grandparents or relatives they know because they're familiar spirits they don't die so that's how they know so it's not your relative that you're speaking to or that the spiritist or uh, medium is talking to they're talking to a familiar spirit which is a demon uh, posing as your relative so you want to be careful of that. And with God, if you need something, all you got to do is ask him. He says, ask and you shall receive that your joy would be made full. And you ask him, he'll answer you. Maybe not this moment, but we have to learn to be patient. He will answer you. There are benefits to being patient. The Bible says, let patience have her perfect work in you. It produces character and it produces endurance. Good things about you, for you. Okay, so I want to read the whole thing about the sorceress. Oh, if I can see this, it's so tiny. Um, okay, it says, and this is in Exodus. And Leviticus okay Exodus chapter 22 and Leviticus 20 in Exodus it says you must not allow a sorceress to live sorceress sorcerer and all of these are like the same wizard witch warlock all of that okay it says a man also or woman who has a familiar spirit or who is a wizard and there's a very popular series of books and movies where the main character is a wizard 
So listen, a man also or woman who has a familiar spirit or who is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. And now it says here, a man or woman who is a medium who pretends to consult the dead or who is a spiritus shall most certainly be put to death and be stoned with stones. Their blood is on them. So you see he's naming all of these different things. A spiritus, a wizard, a witch, a sorcerer, all of these are all the same. It's all of the enemy of the devil. Okay? And, and this is what God is saying. Okay? So how do you as a Christian want to have any part of that when God clearly says they're to be put to death. So if God don't like them, we certainly shouldn't. Do you know what I'm saying? And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, you see people like this and um, Jesus Christ, believe it or not, you know, I'm not saying they can't be born again. You know, pray for them because they're somebody's son, they're somebody's daughter, cousin, aunt, uncle, the parent in this stuff. I mean, I think we should pray for everybody. But if they're going to practice this, I don't know. That's what God said. I'm just reading it out of the Bible. I'm not saying this to be mean. This is what God is saying. And you know why? Why? Why would he say they're to be put to death? There must be a reason, because he knows. These people are going to hurt you. They're of the devil. Right? He knows they're going to hurt you. And ruin your life. Trust me, they're not trying to help you. You know, at, at first, you know, they, need your, they want your money or whatever, but trust me, I'm going to tell you something. You start messing around with the devil, and he, don't play, he doesn't play fair. He will wreak havoc on your life unlike anything you have ever dreamed or known or thought. And it's creepy and it's weird. You know, um, I can't explain it. It gets very, very creepy. You know, the enemy can make people think things. He can turn people against you. He can cause things to happen that are harmful to you or to those you love. I'm telling you, don't dabble in this stuff. Have nothing to do with this holiday. Or, you know, why would God say, this is what gets me. Think about this. I hope you can get a hold of this. Why would God say to put them to death if they weren't doing anything bad, right? He knows the long-term effects, the immediate effects, long-term effects, you know, of what could happen. He loves you so much. He doesn't want this stuff to happen to you. God want, God will give you everything you need. He says in Philippians 4.19, it says, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, you might think, oh, with the devil I can get more power, more money, more, uh, I can get smarter or whatever. I, and you know, he probably could do that. But there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And he will come a-calling. You have to pay him back. And it won't be pleasant. He'll attack your, your family, your finances, your health, and eventually you. Because he don't like you either. And if you think he does... Think again. You obviously don't know about him. And I would say to get your reference for that, go to the Bible. Because it clearly tells you that the devil roams about as a roaring lion. This is, oh, I got it right here. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... 
as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist, this is what God is saying, resist him. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affections are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So it's letting you know the devil is never good and he never has anything good. And if it appears good, remember who he also is? The father of all lies. So remember everything he's telling you is a lie. And the cool thing about it, God, everything he tells you in the word of God is the truth. Because God cannot lie. He says, I'm, a man, I'm not a man that I should lie or the son of man that I should repent. If I said it, I'll make it good. So God makes good on his promises. The devil lies to you. Anything he may have told you is a lie. Because he can't tell the truth. So you heard about that. Um, So I told you that was Exodus. Just read this, please. It starts in Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, and then Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. Okay? So that's for that. Um, I wrote down a lot of different things about that holiday. It doesn't take much to research, you know, and okay. And I tell you what, can I just say this? You know, and ask the Lord too. You know, just say, Lord, is what she's saying true? And if so, please help me to research this. Help me to find the right videos and talk to the right people about it. It's really very easy. If I can do it. And I'm not even a, a good technical person. If I can do things, anybody can do things. Okay? So I so put that out there. Um, and here's another good scripture about, you know, Halloween and, and you know. And, and I know you say, oh, don't dress up as anything bad. But I hate to say it. They still do. They still do. Even to come to your church, they still do. So your kids are going to see all these demons dressed up and, and witches. They're going to. They don't, they, they don't get the memo, you know? I mean, do you really want that? They're pretty much there for the candy. They really don't want to be evangelized. They want to take part in the fun and the party and just stand there and, and see how many people you're going to lead to the Lord. They're really not there for the gospel. Unless you're, you're putting on a play or a, um, a video. But again, why do you have to do it that night? Why don't you do it on, you know, a couple months before that or several months before that and have absolutely nothing to do with that? You know, if the devil and all his people want to do that, that's their thing. I'll just pray what we should be doing on that night, Christians. Instead of trying to do a trunk or treat or hallelujah night, we should be in the church, yes, with our kids. No candy, no fun and games on our face, fasting and praying for what goes on that night. Please, if you don't know what goes on that night, it's not that hard to find out. I've watched enough ex-Satanists, enough witches, enough stories of people that literally grew up in the occult, grew up under having like Satanist grandparents or parents. They'll tell you the horrific things that go on that night. And they will tell you some that were able to escape with their lives. They'll tell you this is what goes on in these covens and when they all get together and on that night, they tell you what happens to them and to a lot of other people. Okay. It's not hard to research and it doesn't take much. All you'd have to do is probably watch one and you'd be repenting saying, Lord, I didn't know. I'm sorry. That's what we need to do. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good. Don't call evil good. It's not good. I mean, come on. If you, if you start thinking that, then what has happened? 
what has happened to where you can't decipher what is or isn't and this is another thing as far as I'm concerned um, you know too where children are you know why why are the kids you don't see adults well, adults are out partying on that night they shouldn't be either they should know better but then to put your kids out there you know what why the children you know it's like yeah so um yeah it's not good anyway okay i'm gonna go on um let me go to another i had my pages marked for this supposed holiday um oh i know what i was gonna say i lost my train of thought um okay so watch this thing this show okay and you know and it's about houses and um you know these people go into different houses and they want you to do you like this one do you like that one do you like this one this is more luxurious this is more um uh, cheaper this is this one is um original whatever and you know i noticed on this and i didn't notice it at first but again a lot of times we do things in innocence and we don't know i don't, I, I don't know you know what i mean because it looks like an absolute perfectly innocent show and you know what probably is but then i start seeing this is what happens to us and this is why we have to learn to stand our ground and it's hard to do because every time you do you're gonna either offend somebody saying well i don't see anything wrong with it or oh you're too radical you're too extreme you know that's not what that means it's no big deal but in these shows i noticed that that they're always drinking I don't even want to go there on that. We'll talk about that someday. And I'm thinking, well, it looks to me like we got some alcoholics here because in every show. Now, maybe they're making them do it. I'm not saying they're, obviously they are. Whoever's producing it is saying, okay, you know, give them a glass at the end of the night. You know, they're all drinking. They're putting it in there. Then I also noticed at the end of the night, almost always i don't like to use absolutes but almost they've got some kind of thing that goes with the house if you visit this one this is what you know you get your food you get these you get to go out on the boats you get to do you know they're telling you all the different you know you get to go in the sauna all the different perks that go with these houses well also they provide um like oh yoga classes or here's a I, I don't know what you want to call or a spiritist or something you get to have a, a a night of meditation and they're all sitting on pads and in these um uh in these you know i don't even want to do it but they're you can tell they're meditating whether it's with stuff floating up in the air as far as incense type things or mute some kind of sounds but it's some kind of they're having him go through some kind of meditation of some kind and it's it's part of the perk and i'm like and they're showing this more than once i've seen it and i'm like all right again it's 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 what's happening is it's like they're trying to desensitize us and put it in all the different shows and all the different this and all the different that every time you you know even if you're watching even on your phone or something a commercial will come up and they, they keep throwing things in front of your face and the more they do that the more desensitized we become we're so used to seeing it it doesn't even bother us anymore because it seems like the norm like oh i wouldn't be able to watch anything then you know because it's everywhere well then maybe you shouldn't <laughs> it's called get out get rid of the tv or don't spend so much time on social media somebody was telling me the other day that there's one site i don't uh, i've never i don't think i've ever been on it but sometimes they put those teeny little tiny 
things on your phone and um but i guess there's this one site that they said it's almost like all porn like literally and i i i just think you know again if what somebody is doing in a tv show or a video goes against and it could be a perfectly innocent show about a house houses you know decorating if what they're doing goes against your heart i'm not gonna promote that i'm not watching it again i won't you know does my little not watching it have make any difference I, but what if we all did that why promote shows that are going to try to normalize these things that are not good for people you know what i'm saying that's a cultic type stuff and then i'm not going to go there on the drink and i got my my opinion on that you know and i'm not going to watch it that either so again all right i like this i wrote this down listen to this i don't know where i got it but it's good right in the middle of all we're talking about <laughs> holiness brings happiness when we follow god's ways it leads to a much happier people and a much happier world yeah that's good that is so good anyway i had uh some more i wanted to say about this but believe it or not people all those things that you do the trick-or-treat the um pumpkins carved out um you know just the things that people do on that night they all mean something just like when you do yoga, every stance you make, every breath you take, when you're in that um, doing it, it means something. You need to find out what these things mean. Do you know what I'm saying? But the, thing, the nice thing is, is when you do find out, all you have to do is repent. God, I didn't know. I'm sorry. This one preacher said, repent. Once you recognize it, then you repent, then you renounce it. Now, renounce to me, you just... Basically, what you're saying is, is, Lord, I want, or, you know, basically you're saying, I don't want any of that, that I did, those decisions I made, those choices I made. I renounce any effect that they have on my life or my future generations. And you renounce it in Jesus' name and say, whatever that door was that I opened up, I close it now in Jesus name I think we should pray that because I don't have too I don't think I have too too much to say about that I'm trying to get this across to people um, again I think it's best to get educated on it because I could tell you to um, you know I can go on and on and on but if you don't receive it it's just gonna like go over your head and you're gonna be like uh you know, it doesn't bother me. All I'm saying is, is my question has been lately is, Lord, just because I don't understand it or know about it, does that mean it doesn't affect me? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, Okay, so I do want to pray. I want to pray for people. Okay, I did that one. I've got these pages marked that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, okay. Well, this is about the supposed holiday, whatever you want to call it. Um, another scripture before I pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Now, I'm sorry. It, it's not hard to figure out that this holiday revolves around the demonic. Um, look at the costumes. And even if some of them you think are innocent, probably aren't as innocent as you think if you knew the history behind them as well. 
and a lot of times people will dress up vulgar too also um it's just nothing about it is holy i mean seriously there is there isn't and but again please do some research and i really think that that's going to do it for you i'm going to pray that god will help you uh for that um it's just, you know, everything about that holiday is, it actually is demonic. So, they think that, what I've heard is they, you know, they feel on that night that the, the realm of the demonic is the closest that it can be to the natural realm. And so, they can call up and conjure up all kinds of demonic demons and activity to go on that night and um I certainly wouldn't want anybody ingesting any food from people I didn't know or because you really don't know what's in the life of a person you might be surprised you know because your modern day witches don't have the hats on and the warlocks don't they don't look like they do in the movies okay the bible says the devil appears as an angel of light so, I don't want any candy that somebody had cursed. <laughs> you don't know, you know? Anyway, um, yeah. We're supposed to be, we have to remember people. We, we don't have to be like them to get them out of that kingdom of darkness, you know? We're supposed to do what honors God. We're supposed to be different. You know, Halloween, you know, has fear all over it. We can clearly see it in God's word time and time again. You know, because he says, you know, do not fear. Do not be afraid. You know, fear not over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that holiday's got fear all over it. Everywhere. Okay. Even if you don't know what goes on, please find out what goes on. You, yeah, it's really bad, you know. God says he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to pray. Um, here's another good scripture is uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 the Bible says have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but expose them this holiday is dark from beginning to end have nothing the Bible says have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of of darkness if anything I think the church should be praying that night that's what we should be doing or if you in home whatever on your faces with your kids let's pray there's a lot going on this night and you can educate your kids tell them what is going on parents know how to do that in the right way you know so they won't think it's all fun and games and they're missing out. No, honey, this is what it really means. This is what's going on. A lot of really bad things go on this night to a lot of people. And so let's pray for them. That's what we should be doing. So, um, so I want to pray. And, um, you know, I had all this stuff written down about what how it means what people do on that night, but I, I, I gave you the word. If the word is not enough, you know, you can do your own research. You're not going to listen to me anyway. To me, the power is in the word. And I pray that the word of God is what, and the anointing in that word, and the power in that word is what changes your heart and mind. I can't do it. Even if I try to tell you, I mean, it, well, it does help, you know, because I've learned a lot from godly people, you know, telling me truths that I didn't know. I didn't know that was, you know, many, you know, many decisions I've made in my life because I didn't know, 
And I wish I would have known what the Word of God says because I wouldn't have made those stupid decisions. And yes, they did affect my life because I made the wrong decisions because I didn't know what the Word of God said. So yes, it's good for people to tell you, listen, people are trying to tell you. You can love the Lord with all your heart and be making wrong decisions just because you don't know. And here's the deal. Yes, I could keep telling you, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. Yes, become knowledgeable about the Word of God. The Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge. Do not have a lack of knowledge. The Bible will tell you about it. I just gave you a bunch of scriptures. You know? Spend time with the Lord. Get close to the Lord. The Bible says that God, the Holy Spirit, will guide you and lead you into all truth. He'll let you know. You know, but you got to stay close to him and ask him and he will answer you. Yeah, he will. So let's pray um, right now. Yeah. I think that's good. You know, on this subject, I've given you the scriptures and I can just pray that God will reveal to you the truth about this holiday. So let's, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is the most important thing is salvation. That's really why I'm doing these videos. So your salvation and where you spend eternity is more important than anything. Okay. So the Bible says in John chapter three, verse three, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of heaven. And so you just, Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior and really mean it. And he will. And read your Bible. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. And so I want to pray for that. And then after that, I'm going to pray for, you know, anybody that's done these things. And I'm just going to pray God will give you wisdom and guide you and lead you into all truth regarding this, what we're talking about. Okay. So, and convict you. I, you know, I pray for that. I pray for conviction. I want conviction. I want to know if I'm doing something wrong. Lord, convict me. I pray. I do. I pray that. I want to be convicted. You know, I don't want to be going on, making decisions and doing things that are not good for me. You know? So, let's pray right now. If you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Just pray with me. I pray for you. And I just pray. You can repeat after me if you want. Say it in your own words. But just say, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I ask that you forgive me for all my sins. I, I want to live for you now. I haven't been living for you. And I'm sorry for my sins. But I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. And I want to live for you. Show me how. Teach me, Lord, in your word. Give me revelation. Help me to obey you, Lord God. I want to be your child. I give you my life right now. I know Jesus died for me and rose again from the dead. And I want to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, you're born again. And again, it's, it's coming out of your heart. It's your words. God knows if you're sincere. You know, everybody might is going to sound a little bit differently or say different words. Um, so it's, it's just that cry from your heart, you know, that you want to start over and have Jesus Christ be the Lord of your life. So now, as far as that holiday... Let's just pray, and you can repeat after me again, pray, and actually, just we're going to recognize it, if you have, you can just say, Lord, I have done that, I've celebrated that in many different ways, um, <clears throat> you know, you could have dressed up, you could have had your kids do it, you could be putting the pumpkins out, you know, you could be doing it at the church, which, you know. To say, Lord, I repent. I recognize that I've done this. And it, I feel convicted now. And I pray, Lord God, that you convict people of whatever wrong regarding this holiday they've done. 
You know, conviction's a good thing, people. I love to be convicted. It, it makes me aware that God's on top of it, that he's keeping me going down the right path. It's, conviction is a good thing. Pray for conviction. It's the Lord, convict them. If they're doing it wrong, if they're doing anything regarding this holiday, you know, that's unpleasing to you. That's not your will. That's n not holy. Lord, I pray conviction in Jesus' name. Remember, conviction is not condemnation. All you got to do is say, I'm sorry. That's it. And his blood cleanses you. You know, there's no condemnation in Christ. We've all done things, many things that we shouldn't have done. All you got to do is say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. First John 1, 9 was written to Christians. He says, if you can, or I wonder if it was written to non-believers too, but he says, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I guess I could go for both. So just all you got to do is say, I'm sorry. His blood is still fresh. It covers you and it cleans you. It makes you as white as snow. Yeah, it's so cool. You don't have to do anything for it. He shed his blood for free. His salvation that you could go to heaven is for free. I love that. But Father, if I've done anything regarding this holiday... I am sorry. Forgive me for it. And we all know what holiday it is. It's in October. <laughs> that's the last day. Okay, that's kind of easy. So, if I've done anything that displeased you, if I did anything wrong with it or with my kids or my family, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry. I recognize it and I repent. And right now, I renounce it. In Jesus' name, I renounce the effects of celebrating that. I renounce what open doors I opened. I renounce them, that the enemy has no more attachment to me because of what I did. Every door I opened, I close now. I put the blood of Jesus on that door. And I love this. Think about this. The blood of Jesus... Remember when he, uh, the angel of death passed over? Now, of course, you're not going to die or anything, but remember when the children of Israel, the 10th plague, was when they put the, the blood of Jesus over the door and on the lentils? Say, I put the blood of Jesus over all that I did, all the doors that I opened regarding this holiday, celebrating it, taking part in it, dressing up, having my kids do it. I renounce any place it gave to the enemy and I put the blood of Jesus over it, over every act that I committed or had my kids or family do. I put the blood of Jesus over every wrong choice, every costume, every decision, every decoration, every part of it that I, that I took part in. I put the blood of Jesus over it. I command every demonic spirit that may have attached itself to my life because of it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it to go. I'm telling you, we're going to do deliverance right here, right now. Tell it to go. If you feel that, you know, there was a, a demonic thing that came upon you, in you, regarding any part of that holiday, cast it out. You know what the Lord showed me the other day? A lot of people don't believe in deliverance, but and Christians say, oh, Christians can't have demons. But unless I'm wrong, there isn't any place in the Bible where it says cast a demon off. It always says cast them out. Now, again, I, I'm not a Bible scholar. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But it always say cast it out. So right now, in the name of Jesus, if any demon entered, from anything you ever did regarding that holiday on the last day of October, the 31st. I cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus, and I pray the power of God, the anointing of God, just tell it to go. Say, I cast you out now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You have to go in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, you can do self-deliverance. Someone else can do it for you, with you, or you can do it yourself. But we kind of just did it together. So praise the Lord. You know, if two of us agree touching anything, it shall be done. It's that easy to get free from the enemy. So we did it. Hallelujah. 
and whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So I am pretty much done with that. And I pray God gives you wisdom regarding this holiday as far as, you know, what is, the Bible says, do all things for the glory of God. So I pray that you will do all things to the glory of God. So God bless you until next time.